And Rochester's original starting lineup. You've got Lauren Foley out there, as well as Brenna James. And this is Gonzalez with the basketball for Case as we start the second half. McCoy into Hageman, and Kara traveled with the basketball. Well, I think right out of the gate, the Spartans were going to throw the Yellow Jackets a curveball because you see Hageman and, and Amber he standing on that left wing, kind of in the, in the same formation, like a, a double screen almost. And then Kara ended up with the ball, but unfortunately, you know, she just shuffled her feet. But I, I like the idea, though. Leslie cut off by Hageman. They'll go out top to Foley, and we've got a whistle inside. Foul's going to go against Case. Foul will go against Jessica McCoy. That's her second. Yeah, she's coming over to help. Just a little too much body contact, but two fouls in the early third quarter is still not quite foul trouble just yet, so she's going to stick around for a little bit. At the free throw line, shooting is Lauren Foley. Foley, a 90% free throw shooter from Lincoln Sudbury High School in Sudbury, Maine. Just a freshman. Alexandra Leslie almost stole that basketball. You've always got to be aware of Leslie. Here's Ambergy with it, with Deming on her. At one point in that opening half, this Case women's team trailed by 12. They late rally, they took a one point lead at halftime. This is Gonzalez with the basketball, 10 seconds to shoot. Case having, having a struggle getting into an offensive flow here. Hellman with a wild shot, almost went, and Leslie rips the rebound. Hellman with a steal. Hillary the other way, two on three, gets it to Ambergy. Travels off to Hageman, shots up, missed it long, and Green down with a rebound. And that was Rochester's 10th turnover. That's normally a department that they do extremely well at, but. Spartans defense today, moving all around. They have forced a couple mistakes. Long three, misses it long, ball's tipped. Hellman comes up with it. Hellman with a strong drive, high off the glass and it dropped. Hillary Hellman with a wild layup. You know, you really don't have to make it look good as long as it goes. I mean, they'll definitely take it. Hellman now in double figures with a strong attacking move. Hageman's going to pick up her third foul. Actually, that's her second foul. Coach Reimer, a little bit of a smile. There's a look at that bench. The Spartan women's basketball team off to a great start this season. 10 and 5, 2 and 2 in conference play. Leslie inside, triple team, gets it out to Deming. Three in the air, missed it, air ball. Yellow Jackets control. This is Kaminsky, nice move along the baseline, missed her shot but got her own rebound, and then she'll shoot two free throws. Yeah, and Rochester did not shoot particularly well from behind the line in the first half, just two of six. They didn't seem as willing to take those threes, so if, if you're gonna pick who's going to shoot. I would much rather triple team Leslie down low and force the three-point shooters to beat you of this team. Because, I mean, you can live on the block with Leslie down low with her and her 15 points in the first half, but force the three-point shooters of Rochester to be the ones that would beat you. Fouls on Jess McCoy, and that is her third, and Coach Reimer looked at Jess and put three fingers up, said, you've got three, and then she pointed to her temple, said, use your head. So McCoy will remain on the floor. That's Gonzalez for three. Deming with the rebound. Hageman picked up her second. McCoy picked up her third after we talked about how one of the things that Case did in the first half was stay out of foul trouble. But they've opened the second half with a couple of quick ones to two key players. This is McCoy with the basketball. Roth is off the bench. She's coming in. This is Hellman with a fadeaway shot, and it's good. Hillary Hellman has 15 points, Eddie, but she has worked extremely hard for every one of those. Rochester has not given her an open look. 
Hellman really used to shooting over a lot of people, but she's not going to be able to shoot over most players here for Rochester as another steal. Hageman ends up with it. Lauren Foley is going to pick up a foul. That will be Foley's third as she dove to the ground to try to get it back from Hageman. So Hellman will take a seat. Alex Roth comes in for her. Hageman will spot up, shoot it. They left her open. Deming comes down with a rebound. Leslie gave her a lot of room. She was daring Hageman to shoot, and she's made those shots before. It just didn't go. Long pass out. Three in the air. Deming goes up and over. Ambergy and pulls down that rebound. Another three. Second try at it, and this one's good for Lauren Foley. And offensive rebounds will lead to Open threes. If you can't hit one in one spot of the floor, might as well try another spot, and they nailed it from the wing. This is Hageman with a strong move. Splits the defense, drew the foul. Foul's going to go against Sarah Kaminsky. That is Kaminsky's second, and that will send Hageman to the line. She'll shoot two. I think I saw more contact on there from 34, Laura Foley, but because it's not too relevant who it would have went on at the time, there's still contact by somebody. Missed them both. Deming with a strong ball fake, pulls up from eight feet. Nice basketball move, Deming's got eight. Well, she can make that shot in her sleep. I mean, it's just beautiful, crisp looking shot. Ambergy off to Muth, long three. She was hot in the first half. That one looked, looked like it was on again. I was going to go on Alexis Ambergy. Jim Scheibel, the head basketball coach in that shot. He's led this Rochester team over the years to 10 NCAA tournament appearances. They've made the final four three times. As Deming scores inside, she's got 10. The Spartans just didn't communicate there. And a two-point lead just moments ago has turned into a five-point deficit. Reimer. She had her big year a couple of years ago, 2013. The team won 16 games. Finished with eight wins in this tough University Athletic Association play. Team has 10 wins so far this year. She'd like to see this year end with a with a win total that topped that 2012-2013 team. That was a team led by Evie Iacono and Erica Ifelice. Iacono was UAA player of the year that year as Hellman hits another three. Got to get Hillary Hellman back and going again. One of the elite three-point shooters in this conference. Got to know where she is every single time. Foul inside, it's going to be an offensive player control foul. It will go against uh, Lena Ethington. And there it is. Clearly created the contact. Great call. Here comes Hageman. Back cut, Hellman, reverse layup. And Jess McCoy is going to pick up her fourth foul. She will quickly head to the bench. That's one of those ones when Coach Reimer pointed at her and pointed to her, her temple and said, Jess, use your head, play smart with three fouls. 
that's maybe a fight that you don't want to get in right there for picking up that fourth foul. Yeah. Got half a third quarter to play, plus an entire fourth quarter to play. And she will probably be on the bench after this free throw for the rest of this third quarter. That's Deming at the line. And I, and I really didn't think it was a bad play by McCoy at all. I mean, it's not too much contact down there, but when you get the whistle and you get the fourth foul, just something you have to avoid. Well, sometimes you wonder how much the uh, coaches get into the ears of the officials because Scheibel, just before that call was made, was really bending the ear of the official that ultimately made that call, saying, we're not getting, they're being physical on, on our end and we're not getting calls. That was right after they called the foul on Ethington. He said, we're not getting that call on our end. And uh, they got it seconds later. Foul is on uh, Mary Cronenwetter. That is her second. And this is Hageman. She'll go to the free throw line. She'll shoot two. Kara started out three for three in the opening half from the foul line and then missed two in a row here moments ago. Foul correction. Foul went on Jillian Silvestri. And that is her first. So Cronenwetter is still with one foul. Helmet keeps it alive, that's a big keep. Back to Hillary, in the corner, three in the air, got it. Boy, she created that one herself. How about that, 19 points, nobody else on the floor even close to that. Her three point shooting is something else. Traveling. I have to take a look at the official book. I've got it for 21, so obviously I gave her a bucket that she did not get somewhere along the way. But nonetheless, 19 or 21, Hellman, there, she, there you see her slapping fives. Number 24 as her teammates come in. We'll take a break. Spartans are up a point. Inspired by the 60s, Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. Visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. Inside the Veal Center. On the campus of Case Western Reserve University, Sunday afternoon, University Athletic Association play here at Horsburg Gymnasium. 3.23 left to play in this third quarter. Spartans trying to improve to three and two in conference play, same way that the Yellow Jackets of Rochester are trying to go. This is Hellman for a three, missed it long. Ethington with the rebound. I think she shot that one there because she was feeling it, but Couple defenders in her face. What good defense that time by Kara Hageman. But then sneaking in backside is Silvestri for an easy layup. We'll see how it goes over the next three minutes here in this third quarter. Spartans will play the last four minutes of this quarter without their maybe their top defender, Jess McCoy. She's on the bench with four fouls. Helmet against Ethington, steps back, shoots it, missed it long. Well, you see the Spartans continuing to shoot from mid-range, but I mean, you've got Leslie on the bench, you've got Deming on the bench. Now is the time to attack this Rochester defense, try to get something in the paint and get it in the hole. Tip, balls out, Gonzalez ahead to Muth. The freshman, cross-court pass, Hellman for three, got it! Hillary Hellman has 24. And from everywhere, I mean the corners, in between the circles, the wings, just an outstanding three-point shooter. She can hit from anywhere, and she's feeling it once again. Ethington draws the defense, kicks it out. There's a long three, it's real long, and Rochester will control it. 
Fouls against Gonzalez. That is her second. Eddie, in an interesting move, Jessica McCoy is back in the game. Kenna Lauer makes both free throws, ties this game up at 50. I think it's more of an aggressive move by Jen Reimer as Hageman all the way with her left hand. Nice heads up play by the junior forward. Hageman's first basket of the second half. She's got 13. This is Leslie. Defender on her hip. Missed the shot. Ball's loose. And a foul will go against Rochester. I believe Jillian Silvestri. Nope, not Silvestri. The foul's going to go against... Well, it's foul number five, whatever it is. 34. Foul's on Foley. 34. That's... Lauren Foley, that's her fourth. This is Emma Hawk at the free throw line for Case. Leslie inside, almost stolen. Jess McCoy with four fouls, just let Leslie go right by her, and Alexandra just missed the layup. How about that? Hageman out to Hellman. This is McCoy now with the ball. Now Roth, back to McCoy. Inside to Hawk, Leslie steals it. Long three, Roth defends, ball goes up. McCoy tips it along with Deming, and the ball will stay with the Rochester Yellow Jackets. A lot of the Yellow Jackets threes, they have missed them deep, and if you miss them deep, that means rebounding opportunities on the weak side of the ball. That's good awareness by Jess McCoy to contest that rebound and get a fingertip in there. This is Kaminsky with the inbound, and Deming now has it top of the key. Traveling. Thought she'd get the crab dribble, Lizzie Atkinson did. She said it works for LeBron in the NBA. <laughs> yeah. Why not me here in Division Three? Jim <laughs> Scheibel's asking, she said, I just saw it last night at the Q when uh, yeah. the Cavs were playing the Spurs. Nice try. A Little bit different here. Definitely give her an A for effort there. This is Gonzalez with the basketball. We're at 16 seconds left to play third quarter. Spartans are up two. Down to 10 seconds. Hageman almost got it stolen. Kira's gonna drive. Here's McCoy as a cutter. Left-handed shot blocked by Deming. Three seconds. Deming's going to have to get one off. Two seconds. She'll launch at the buzzer. Didn't go. Three quarters are in the books here at Horsburg Gymnasium, and the Spartans are smiling. And this is a great battle. Rochester's smiling, too, because this is anybody's ball game. Stay tuned for the next 10 minutes. We'll be back. Everyone loves a comeback, right? Especially when that comeback is Queso Diablo from Qdoba. Full of spicy satisfaction to take you straight to Queso Bliss. That fiery, smoky sensation you've been craving has returned. Celebrate the comeback of Queso Diablo. Available now and for an infinite time. Only at Qdoba Mexican Grill. Eddie, it was a one-point Spartan lead at halftime. It's a two-point Spartan lead as we head into the final 10 minutes. In a game that has been as even as the score, 
since about midway through early on, I should say, in the second quarter when Case was down 12 before they started hitting shots like Hellman's three there. It's been back and forth, back and forth since that point, and there's no reason to think that that will change here in the final 10 minutes. Yeah, I've been really impressed by the defensive effort from Case Western Reserve. I mean, 23 points in the first quarter. Rochester got basically whatever they want inside. It was a monster quarter for Leslie, as you saw Hageman driving with a foul right there. But 12 points in the second quarter, 15 in the third quarter, and Rochester is is in a funk offensively. That's what's kept you know the Spartans here in this game. But Spartans still have a long way to go. It's going to be a long quarter. Leslie from 15 feet missed it. She is scoreless, by the way, in the second half. When Rochester was in Pittsburgh on Friday night, it was an ugly second half shooting that spelled doom for them. And what spelled doom for Case is Hageman throws up a three and missed it. Leslie gets the rebound on Friday night against Emory was, they just couldn't get any good shots. It wasn't that they were shooting poorly. They just could not get good looks. Emory's defense was that good late in the game. Long three and it's good. That's Lizzie Atkinson with her first basket of the afternoon. And prior to that, they just went 3 of 12 from deep, but that's going to help the percentage. Hageman with a ball fake. Takes Leslie, draws the defense. Good ball movement. Roth with a 3, misses it. And down with the rebound is Deming. Deming dribbles in herself. That was easy. Well, now it'd be a bad, bad time for her to start heating up. She did a lot of scoring in the first quarter, now 17 for the game. And that extends the Yellow Jackets lead to three. As the Spartans cough it up there. So the start of this fourth quarter has not gone well for the Spartans. Four quick points for the visiting Yellow Jackets. 55-52. This is Atkinson. A little soft floater missed, and McCoy comes down with a rebound. Hellman cut off. McCoy with a ball fake. Dribbles in against Leslie, laid it up and in. Nicely done, very well, nicely McCoy done. Jess McCoy went right after the Giant. She's got six. And she switched hands mid-flight right there. Just got a little comfortable and laid it in. Good defense by Alexis Ambergy. Here comes Gonzalez the other way. Hageman working inside. Finds McCoy from 16 feet. Got it. Nothing but that there. I mean, Jess McCoy doesn't look like a lot of points on the scoreboard, only eight, but that's magnified. I mean, it's coming from a senior leader, and she's on the floor for all the right reasons, making all the right choices, and playing great defense, too. Leslie into a triple team, kicks it off to her teammates, and ball's tipped out off Rochester. Yeah, Ron, I mean, really, what a difference from that first quarter. I mean, Rochester was getting everything inside, and since, I mean, they're now shooting under 40% for the game when you've got, you know, two bigs that are shooting well over 50%. This has been a terrific defensive effort by Case Western Reserve here today. Jessica McCoy has scored on the last two possessions. She's with the basketball. Now it's Hageman, spots up, shoots a three. And here comes Rochester the other way. Silvestri with it. Into Leslie, working against Hageman. Strong move. Hageman blocked the shot. Kara Hageman, balls loose. Atkinson comes up with it. Back to Leslie against McCoy with four fouls, and she went uncontested. First basket, if my scorebook is correct, in the second half for Alex Leslie. Score 
Scoreboard's got it for 19. I've got it for 17, so that must be your second bucket. I must have missed one. Here's Hageman with a soft shot. She got it. Hageman's got 15. Back and forth, back and forth. It has been this way since early on in the second quarter. Rochester had a commanding lead early in that second quarter. They were up 12. Case came back, and it's been tight ever since. This is McCoy the other way. Quickly down the floor. Hageman with the layup. Turnover wants a timeout. Turnover number 16 turns into points for Kara Hageman. And with the very big centers on the floor, important to run the floor. And that's what you get from your forward. Very well done by the Spartans. They are up three. 5.37 left. Don't go anywhere. Everyone loves a comeback, right? Especially when that comeback is Queso Diablo from Qdoba. Full of spicy satisfaction to take you straight to Queso Bliss. That fiery, smoky sensation you've been craving has returned. Celebrate the comeback of Queso Diablo. Available now and for an infinite time. Only at Qdoba Mexican Grill. McCoy and Hellman. Hellman's putting on her headband. Marissa Muth, the freshman, along with Hageman coming out. They'll be joined by Alexis Ambergy. And they'll defend as we come out of that timeout. Brenna James with the basketball. This is Deming now. Deming drew the defense, had a nice feed into her teammate Leslie, and Jess McCoy is going to foul out of the game. Here's the fifth foul. And McCoy will leave with five fouls, eight points. And that will hurt in many ways. Yeah, that, well, the, the most unfortunate thing was she was defending one of the best offensive players on the floor for the Yellow Jackets. I mean, you, she really can't get tangled up in that. Somebody else has to take her. You know, whether it's a double team or, or whoever it's going to be, your player with four fouls cannot be guarding the best offensive player. They go right to her. Leslie with 21. You can count on that being the pattern over the next 5-13. This is Hellman. Gonzalez. Hageman's going to draw the defense out. Case working outside. Hageman, we've got eight seconds to shoot. Kara still with the basketball. She's going to hand it off to Muth. Four seconds to shoot. Hageman throws up a three. It's a long one. It was a prayer, and it went as an air ball. Case just worked themselves into that situation. Definitely not the shot that they wanted, needless to say. Uh, I think they were looking for something inside, but good perimeter defensive work by the Yellow Jackets, and now they're in position. The bucket would give them the lead. Kaminsky threw up a shot. She'll shoot two free throws. Fouls on Gonzalez. That is Alicia's third. And at the line shooting two will be Sarah Kaminsky. She is two of two from the foul line this afternoon. She's a 76% shooter on the season. That one ties the game at 60. Gonzalez and Ambergy, along with Hellman, will work it on the perimeter. Last possession for Case turned into almost a shot clock violation. This is Hageman, draws the foul. No, shot was blocked. Leslie with a big block. Leslie picked up by Hellman. Foley back to Leslie. Swing it right side in front of her teammates. Three's in the air, and it's good. That is a big time three at a crucial time by Sarah Kaminsky. 
Kaminsky averaging five points per game this season as 10 this afternoon, including seven in the second half. Intercontinental Suites has been transformed into much more than a hotel. It is a center of wellness and tranquility, featuring renovated suites, an expanded fitness center, and pure rooms for guests requiring the most allergen-resistant rooms on the market. C2, our Mediterranean-style restaurant and bar, accentuates the ambiance of relaxation and rejuvenation. Chef Omar Jones has designed a menu full of fresh, locally grown herbs and vegetables, along with a flavorful cuisine inspired by the beneficial Mediterranean diet. Call the Intercontinental today at 216-707-4000. Or visit us at hotels, Cleveland Clinic. Tech. Case led by three with five and a half to go. In the last 90 seconds, Rochester's on a 7 0 run. They're up four. Ambergy with the basketball. This is Hellman now with it. Hellman off a high screen, loses it into a double team. Ball's loose on the floor. Possession arrow is in favor of the Spartans. They haven't had a whole lot of easy looks in the last five or six trips down to their offensive end. They're going to need to work really hard to get something easy because Rochester is stepping it up with defense. Ambergy for three. Got it! Alexis Ambergy, who doesn't score hardly at all for this team because she's not needed to, not asked to. It's not her role in the starting lineup. Just hit a huge three. Deming inside, she was fouled, she'll shoot two. Fouls on Ambergy, she's 5'8", and she's guarding the 6'1", Deming, out of necessity, because that's where Case is at right now, because of foul situations. Well, and that's, that's Ambergy's role, play solid defense, make good decisions. Thought it was a pretty good foul right there, just because of the matchup favoring the Yellow Jackets right there as they make the front end of two, but how about that three by Ambergy? They, they did need to get some kind of an offensive contribution from someone other than Hellman or Hageman. Well, that's a big miss. It's a two-point game. Rochester with the 65-63 lead. We're now inside three minutes. This is Gonzalez, the left-hand dribble. Hageman, they're giving her that three. Hageman drives in, she traveled with the basketball. She got Leslie to leave her feet, but Kara took too many steps herself. Leslie controls, all with one hand. She was tied up by three defenders and went up and still got that rebound. I was on Hellman, that's her third. Tough break, they don't have a foul to give anymore. That was their fourth. This is Deming inside, she missed a shot. But boy, Rochester controls that offensive board. How many times has that happened? That's happened way too many times. Leslie loses it, gets it back, shot off the glass and good. Lead is back to four for Rochester, and the ball falls out of bounds, but the Spartans will keep it. Well, that's a big break for the Yellow Jackets because when the Spartans get numbers, that's when the offense is in their favor. But if Rochester gets to settle into the half court, you got some intimidating shot blackers on the floor. Hageman's going to hand it off to Gonzalez. Two minutes left to play. This is Hageman. Amber Gee, she hit a three a minute ago, misses this one short. So Rochester is giving them right now. They're, they're letting Amber Gee open. They'll say, we'll give you her shot. We'll take our risk. We'll take our chance with her. We're going to shut down Hellman and Hageman. And they've done a nice job of that in the, fast, in the last two minutes. Inside to Leslie. And that one was too easy. She missed it, but got the follow. She almost needs conflict when she's shooting. She misses the easy ones, but makes the ones when they're really all on her. That's just muscle on muscle on muscle. 
right there. And I mean, she did quite a bit of damage early in the game. And she's doing some damage late in the game. That's the, that's a winning equation here for the Yellow Jackets. Go to your go-to player early and late, and you're going to win a lot of games. She's got 28. Gonzalez somehow kept the dribble. Spartans in, in trouble, though. They're down seven with a minute 20 left, and they can't get a good look. Ambergy is going to dribble in, put up the shot, it went, and she was fouled. How about that? Alexis Ambergy. Well, this is what you just love to see. You love the Spartans are not going away. You got not much time left at all, but make a free throw, make it a four-point game. Well, now you got to get a stop. And you know that Rochester is going to get this shot clock down to as close to one as they possibly can. Get it down to about 43, 42. Ambergy with good defense, got the rebound and threw the ball away. That was a costly turnover run. Yep. Demings at the line, she'll shoot two. <laughs> 47 seconds are left. Jen Reimer wants a timeout. We'll take one, too. Her Spartans are down seven with 47 seconds left. Inspired by the 60s, Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. Visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. Case will have the ball, and they've got some work to do. Down seven inside a minute to play. This game has really turned in the last 45 seconds. Credit Rochester. They have made every big shot, made every big free throw, and got a second or third look offensively way too many times. 18 to four in the offensive rebounding department. That will absolutely kill your chances of winning basketball is games. Is that what it is, 18 to 18 four? 18 to four offensive rebounds. It's a wonder Case is even in it. This is Hellman. She's doubled up. Ambergy will throw up a three, she made it. Boy, Alexis Ambergy's doing everything she can to keep her team in this game. Ambergy has 10 points. She averages three on the season. And of those 10, eight of them have come in the last three minutes, I think. Yep. She got hot at the right time. Well, that's a clutch performance. Very clutch by Ambergy. So there's a good look inside the huddle for Case. Coach Reimer is talking to her team. Alexa Dellis, the women's assistant there, is in the left frame of that shot. They need a defensive stop, obviously. Foul situation is this. Case has five fouls in this quarter, which means they're over their limit. So Rochester is shooting free throws. So fouling someone to get the ball back is a risky proposition at this point. You definitely have to pick and choose your battles. You can send somebody to the line in this case, and you can take your time doing it because you still got 10 second differential between shot clock and game clock, but you cannot send 
a superstar of the Yellow Jackets to the line. And you've you got an 84% free throw shooter, a 90% free throw shooter, a 76% free throw. It's like pick your poison. And they have picked Leslie, and she's an 84% free throw shooter. That's a really big thing, Ron. When you've got a 6'2 center, a mobile center, on that last play, she was acting as a point guard. Right. She was trying to free herself up off of the dribble, and now she's at the line shooting free throws. Without that mobility, which is something that a big doesn't normally do, someone else gets the basketball. One more free throw and she's got 30 points. There's a reason she's first team All-American. There's a reason she is the defending University Athletic Association Player of the Year, Co-Player of the Year. Ball is tipped and Deming's gonna get called for the foul, went up and over Alexis Ambergy. And here's, here's an interesting food for thought, Ron. That is just the second foul all quarter by the Yellow Jackets. That is a phenomenal defensive fourth quarter effort. They are staying away from contact. Spartans down five, 30 seconds to play. Hellman with a wild shot, Deming with the rebound, immediately followed by Ambergy. Well, it just kind of seems reminiscent of Friday. I mean, they were in it through uh, you know, a couple minutes passed in the, in the fourth quarter. Played three pretty good quarters. You know, only gave up 12 points in the second, 15 in the third, but all of a sudden Rochester just turns it on and it's game over. Two possession game, need a three and a stop. Need a quick three. Roth with it. Shot almost went. If that would have gone and Alex could complete the three-point play, then, then things are interesting. Well, she's standing on a three-point line trying to get it into Kara, see if she can draw a foul. Now, why is she not shooting? They're, they're going to say the foul was on the floor? I guess so. Yeah, and they still have a foul to give. I mean, we'll get, we'll well, here's get a, a look. Wow. I, I would have sent foul. her to the that, line. Yeah, that foul happened as the ball was going up. That's, a, that's crucial because Case turns it over. Yeah, I, I really don't know. I really don't know how Alex wasn't shooting free throws on that possession. We'll be back for the final 17 seconds and 30 seconds. And here's a look at that, and why this is crucial, because if it is a shooting foul, which it certainly appears that it is, Ross shooting two free throws could draw the game within four. Case doesn't turn the ball over, and now Rochester has it with 17 seconds left. The timeout will advance the ball, and they'll get into Leslie. She'll immediately be followed by Kara Hageman. We gotta give Leslie credit. I mean, she didn't show a whole lot of mobility in the first three quarters, but I mean, she's gotten open when she had to. And she's moving around and getting to the line, taking care of business. Yeah. 
That is her 30th point of the afternoon. And how about this? No fouls. Not a single foul by Leslie. Muth looking for someone. Ball's turned over. Fouls on Alex Roth. Game changed when Jess McCoy fouled out. Coach Reimer has told me many times that McCoy is so important to this team on so many different levels. And I mean, I, I don't think it's a stretch to say the game changed when she fouled out. I would agree. I mean, it changed lots of things. It changed the way they played defense, the way Case played defense. It changed offensive threats. It changed everything. Mostly, mostly the morale. I think the morale really hit them hard after McCoy went out. Great point, Eddie. 77-68 is your final. 